In this clip, we're going to talk about a, a little bit of a general way of working on the shoulder. The shoulder is a really complicated area because you've got basically the collarbone and then you've got the sh the upper upper arm joint and you've got the C-spine joint. All of these are going to influence this area as well as the neck to a certain extent. And what makes it tricky is the wide range of motion that the, that the shoulder has. So I'm going to move this to frame 120 because that's where all of this starts and you can see that the, we're having some issues here the neck is collapsing it actually doesn't look bad in the fully uh, raised version but what getting there is is a little tricky because we're getting some pretty good influences on the neck and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my model and I'll go to my weight painting and I'm not letting me select by influence so okay we'll bring up our box and we'll scroll down here and I'm looking for the left collar there we go all right so we can see right now right off the bat that between the collar and the c-spine joint we're getting some influences there that are kind of preventing things from basically and also neck one we're seeing that we're getting some some these influences and basically you've got this collarbone which is raising but then you've got the c-spine and the neck joints which aren't moving at all okay and that is that's where you're getting some of this these these influences are are, are going to wind up kind of almost being a dam it's going to keep it from actually working uh, the way we want it so i'm going to drop down to the left collar and i'm going to add a very light value because I really do want to kind of sneak up on this. And the problem is that when I raise it, and this raises up, that's going to make it want to collapse even more. But I also know that I am going to get some movement in the neck area. If I have to, I'll use my shift key and smooth that out. All right. Okay, and that's going to affect how the neck moves, going to affect a lot of different stuff. So that's something to be aware of. All right, so going forward, that's not, this area is not too bad. I can add a little bit more, but what we'll see is when we add this, moving this collar to this pose is, is going to wind up changing this pose, changing the deformation of this pose and make them in some ways worse. So when you get a situation like that, there are correctives, there are ways of correcting this that are, again, unfortunately are beyond the scope of this intro class, but I'll point out some areas, some, some classes you can go to to really both for pa weight painting and for corrective deformations that you may want to may want to pick up. All right, so when it moves forward, where we're going to have issues here is going to be in the chest area. And see, now we're getting a lot of collapsing. And so to stop that, I'm going to grab the C-spine, except it's not letting me right-click, so I'll scroll back up to C-spine. And I'm going to try to add a little bit here. Because the more that I put, the more influence that I give to a joint that doesn't move in these poses, the more it's going to pop back to its original shape, or the more it's want, going to want to go back to its original shape. And this is something that you want to sneak up on gradually. You don't want to, you don't want, I'm pressing the three button to bring up my smooth, you don't want to try to do it all at once with one stroke of the brush. It's not a good idea. You want to keep, take it slow and check it against the other poses. All right, so how's that working? Yeah, it's working a little bit better. That will, this painting that extra influence is gonna cause this to hold its position. And that's gonna be an issue in the next pose where he goes down like so. Although that's not all that bad. Okay. Again, what, you, what you're looking for at this stage is more, is it good enough to animate with? That's really what, where this is, where this is going to be, going to be coming from. All right. So right now I've painted influence in the, sh in the collar to the collarbone let's talk about influences for that shoulder joint because maybe that can help us out 
a bit as well. So I'm going to run the collar, and now there's the shoulder. What happens if we increase our influence on the shoulder? And this is one you also want to be careful with because too much influence will really cause this to collapse. On the other hand, this joint is a major player in this in this action because it's raising but then it's also rotating up as well. It's rotating forward and again as I paint here all right I'm spreading out the influence between it and the collar joint and if I want this to move forward more then I can paint more but what's happening is this is rotating as well as being being rotated by the collar joint. So painting more of this means that this is going to collapse more. So I might go back to the C-spine and keep it from collapsing by painting it out a little bit more. And here's where you can lose the form a little bit. So maybe it's sometimes not as, a, it's maybe better to use the black and white so you can see the shape of the muscle underneath here. Okay. And again, that, that muscle is going to contract and it's going to bulge out. And here you can also see the action when I hold down the shift key, you can see the action a little bit better. All right, so now that's doing okay. Now we'll check it against the top. Yeah, there we go. This, for some reason, this back, because it, it's already bat winged a bit, this actually generally looks pretty good to start with by default. This is always the, the down. You wouldn't think it would be that tricky, but that's this is really why a lot of modeling happens. The arms are the, the default pose for the arms is at 45 degrees because this with the arm straight out is a little trickier to paint weights on than if they were at 45 degrees. On the other hand, with the 45 degrees, having the character rise raise its arms above his head is tricky. So it's a trade off. And once I've got it to that point. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go back to frame one. And I will go to mirror weights. Let's see if this works with just this selected. Apply. Yep, it mirrors it. And it should mirror all of the weights. So if I go did it with the C-spine, left collar, and right collar. Yep, that's pretty well mirrored. Okay, so there we go. So this is by no means complete. It's very hard to do this in 10 minutes. It's generally going to take quite a bit more time than that to really, really dial in on it. But um, but the more care you take at this stage, the better. So continue to see if you can make this, you know, make this deformation better by distributing the weights a little bit more. Uh, again, I don't, this, this will work because he's going to have you know, the latissimus muscle is going to do this uh, type of deformation um, if he were proportioned in, in real life. So that's uh, something to think about. So in the next, next clip, we'll move on to other parts of the body.